Hi, and welcome to Reaper Tips, Tricks and Guides, brought to you by Peacebag TV. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how we can start to organize our projects a little bit more logically. We're going to take a look at how we can use regions and markers to create logical parts within our project and move around those parts quickly and easily. There are various different reasons why you'd want to use these techniques, and we'll take a look at a couple of those as we go through the video. But for now, let's take a look at how we can create markers and we can take a look at what the difference is between markers and regions and how they impact upon how we work with moving around our project. So what are regions and markers and how can they help us with our projects? Well, first of all, markers, as its name suggests, allows you to create marker points within your project that you can quickly jump to. Now, these are great, but all they do is allow you to place one marker point. If you wanted to create something a little bit more useful, then you can start taking a look at regions. And as you can see in this project, I've got a couple of regions defined. If we take a look at this area, you can see I've got intro, verse one, course one, verse two, course two, etc. What they allow us to do is separate our project up into chunks that we can easily identify, color code them, give them names. This is a great way if you want to start creating different blocks and then you know as you structure your song, you can move those blocks around to build up the entire project. And there's a lot of music these days, or a lot of music always has, it's built up of your typical intro, your verses, your chorus, your middle eight, your outro, your solos and things like that. So having those regions marked off just means that when you look at your project, you can visually see where you are within it. If you want to work on the editing of a particular part, it's quicker and easier to see that through the visual markers or the visual regions. So let's take a look at how we can create these and we take a look at how quick and easy it is to start moving around between them. So let's start off by creating a marker. It's pretty straightforward. All you do is position your playhead on the timeline where you want it to appear and then either press Shift and M on your keyboard or right click and choose insert marker. That'll bring up a simple dialog box that allows you to give it a name. If you need to fine tune your position, you can do so. If you know that uh, you're roughly in the area you want, but you want to be specifically on this particular time point, then you can adjust that and put the position directly in there. Let's just give it a name. We can color code our markers. So you can just click set color and we'll say we want this to be red. We can give them ID numbers so you can have sequential IDs or you can put them in any order you want. So they can start off at one, and then go to four and then to three and two and seven. However you want to work with this, whatever sort of system you want to work with. Once you're happy with that, just click on OK. And you can see now that we've got on this gray line, we've got sample marker in red. And we can easily jump to that at any point by using the square brackets left or right as we jump through the different parts to go to any marker or region. As, as you can see, it'll operate between markers and regions independently. So you can use the same keyboard shortcut to jump between these different points within your project. So that's how easy it is to insert a marker. If you want to edit it, all you need to do is right click on the marker and you can say edit and you can make any changes you want to there. So we could change the color to something completely different and create a different name, ID, so on. Click OK and you can see that is reflected pretty quickly. Or we can just simply right click and remove marker or we can press the Alt key on the keyboard and click and that'll delete it without having to go through the right click option. So that really is all there is to create in markers. So I'm going to put one back in anyway because I want to show you something a bit later on in the video. But for now, I'll just put this one back in. Okay. So that's all there is to markers. Now let's take a look at regions. As I said at the top of the video, regions, in my particular opinion, are a little bit more powerful because they're a much better visualization of the building blocks that make up your song. But like I say, obviously, that's only if your song uses building blocks. So how do we create these? In a slightly different fashion, what we need to do is make a selection of the area we want to set as our region. And let's just zoom into that a little bit so we can see a bit better what we're doing. So we can fine tune that so it sits wherever we want. Obviously, I've got my snapping uh, is enabled. So if you want to be a little bit more intricate with this, you can turn your snapping off and really fine tune it. And all we need to do then is right click and say create region from selection. Or again, we can use the keyboard shortcut in this case of shift and R. 
So let's just select that. And we've now got a region created for us. It uses the default setting, so it'll just automatically increment it to the next number. In this instance, the number six gives it some default coloring and no name. So to change that, all we need to do is right click where we've got this default gray bar, say edit region, and we can give it a name. So we'll call this one outro. Again, if I can spell, will be all right. Yeah. Again, you can fine tune your position. You can fine tune the length of the region. You can change the ID number of it. We can set the color. And we've got a couple of other options, region manager and re region render matrix. Excuse me, let me put my teeth back in. For now, we'll take a look at those in, in a moment. But let's just click on set color. And we'll set that one to be a nice disgusting yellow. And click OK. And we'll click OK to that as well. So you can see now we've got our new region already set up for us in there. If we zoom out, you can see we've now got all our regions created. So that's all well and good, but what good are they to us? Well, let's take a look at some of the things we can do with them. So at the top of the video, we saw we've got these region markers. And as we've gone through, I've shown you, you can use the left and right brackets to jump quickly around your project through markers and regions. But we've got the region and marker manager which allows us to control or use this information in a much more logical fashion and much quicker if you take a look at the bottom i've got this set up as one of the tabs if you don't see that on there you can simply go to just simply go to your view menu come down and choose region marker manager so what this does is it gives us precise information about each and every region and marker that we've got within our project you can disable regions or markers to make your life a little bit easier so we've left the the marker in there the sample marker well if i don't want to see that i can just simply uncheck on the right hand side that will now just disable it within this panel it doesn't take it out of our project doesn't remove it from there just removes its visibility from this region marker manager and we can do the same if I want only markers. I can uncheck region and you can see now I've only got the markers showing. So let's put regions back on. So what does it do? Well, I can click on any of these and if you watch the playhead at the top, you'll see that it automatically jumps to that specific section. So if you're working with mixing, uh, you can work with this and it quickly jump to different sections within your song. So if you're checking out, you, you need to apply different settings to different parts of it. This is a very quick way and a very intuitive way of jumping around your project without having to rely upon keyboard shortcuts. Or if you want to go to specific areas, you can just jump directly to that without having to jump through all the previous or corresponding you know, sort of uh, markers and regions. So it's a very quick way of working with moving around your project. Another cool feature is the render matrix. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this but I'll give you just a quick overview of, of what its purpose is and why it's useful. So if I click on the render matrix, you can see this brings up a matrix of all of the channels we've got in our entire project, all the way down here. And we've also got all the regions across the top. So what we can do is we can use this matrix to specify what instrument or what tracks are rendered at any particular point within our project. So for example, we may not want the, the base to be rendered out during the, the mid late, for example, or, or a guitar left to be rendered out during the, the intro or the, the, uh, the, the chorus or something along those lines. So what you can do is you can just check the boxes that you don't want to be rendered out very quickly and easily. And then when you render your project, only the, the selected or the options that you want to be rendered out in the various different regions will be used. Now, that's a very, very brief overview, a very simplistic overview of this. But what I'll do is obviously in a future video, I'll take you through and show you how this works in a lot more detail. But for now, just to know that it works with your region and uh, markers. So it's a great way of working with your projects and another powerful tool you can use within your, uh, your regions and your marker made, uh, sort of usage. Now, obviously, with everything to do with Reaper, it's very, very customizable, and there's a lots of other uses you can have with all these different uh, settings and features. Hopefully, you've found this overview pretty useful. Hopefully, you'll find a use for it within your own project. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button at the end. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you've got any comments at all, 
please feel free to pop them in the comment section below. And if you've got any future tutorials you'd like to see on Peacemake TV, please by all means get in touch and we'll see what we can do for you. Until next time, take care.